What you're looking at right now is the most advanced game level ever created. Now, I know you're probably thinking, how could you make such a statement level cap? No doubt it's a great looking environment, but how can it be the most advanced level ever made? Well, it's because this is the cutting edge demo from Epic running on the latest Unreal Engine 5.2 update called Electric Dreams. Everything you're seeing here was procedurally placed by the game engine versus hand crafting. And it's all made with the new experimental system called Procedural Content Generation Framework. It lets developers place assets like paths or structures anywhere in the level. And as you move these elements around, they dynamically blend themselves into the environment. Stuff like fallen trees, rocks, and other features will move around add themselves or delete themselves to fit the environment around them. It's extremely advanced tech and the end result is an absolutely stunning world that in theory should be relatively easy to build and manipulate. Now Electric Dreams isn't a proper game, it's a tech demo. Out of the box really you can only fly around and look at stuff and then in the editor you can manipulate stuff. But my video editor Alex and I added in a first person camera so that we could walk around and show you guys what Epic have built from the gamer's point of view. Creating large and detailed environments like this is one of the biggest hurdles game devs face when it comes to level design, and this tech could dramatically speed up the process while making it accessible to indie devs without sacrificing any level of quality. The amount of time it takes to make, say, a Battlefield 2042 map could be dramatically reduced with this type of tech without having to sacrifice the visual quality at all. It gives level designers the ability to block out entire levels with finished assets and move them around dynamically without having to do a lot of hand placement and nuanced manipulation. Say you placed a massive rock formation in a level and you spend all this time making it look good, but then you get feedback that it's just not really playing very well and it's creating bad gameplay flow. With traditional game engine tech, the level artist would then have to go in, move the rock formation, delete all the little details and nuances that they built around it, and rebuild that stuff in a different location and hope that it plays well. And if the feedback was like, could you move it over to the right by like a foot or two, they'd probably say no because it'll take forever just to move something a few feet and then have to rebuild a whole bunch of stuff around it. However, with procedural content generation, the level artist can move the rock formation around in real time to see where it should go and then may only have minor cleanup issues if any at all. Now, one of the most interesting things about the Electric Dreams demo is how big the game world actually is. Usually, the demo levels that Epic construct are chunks of what has the potential to be a much bigger landscape. But when I jumped into the quote-unquote playable area and started exploring the out-of-bounds regions of the map, I was honestly blown away by just how well everything else held up. Sure, there's definitely some issues to fix like disconnected geometry or floating foliage or no collision on the rocks, but if the devs went in and actually just made some tweaks and cleaned up a few little things here and there, the playable area of this demo would go from like one eighth of the total map to the entire map without probably a lot of effort. Epic also plans to keep improving these tools as this is literally just the first implementation. So making bigger and bigger worlds will get easier. And hopefully they'll build even more asset packs for different types of biomes. Like their Wild West asset pack that they released recently could be plugged into a system like this for fast generation of a Western environment. Now, of course, versions of this tech have been used before. Heck, procedural generation was used to create all the planets and say No Man's Sky, and it's even been used in Star Citizen and other games. But having the assets essentially fit themselves together dynamically and move around as you move in-game assets around is a huge accomplishment. I could even see the system being used to dynamically build levels in real time as a game mechanic. For example, Six Days in Fallujah, the uh, Milsim shooter is making a a big splash right now in part thanks to its procedural level generation. Every match in that game features a unique layout of buildings and the surrounding area and it's all generated by the game. It's really cool and it ensures that every match you play is a little bit different. 
But also this seems are pretty obvious. Everything is clearly built on a very grid-like system, and the closer you look, the more obvious these seams become. But with procedural content generation tech, not only could the seams for levels like this be reduced, but the style of the levels could probably be way more dynamic and thus be less recognizable as tiles or building blocks. It's one of the hits against procedural level generation for a lot of games is that you just recognize a lot of the tiles in similar areas and it makes it feel less unique and you sort of start to understand the system or the magic going on behind the scenes. But the fidelity of Epic's new tech has the ability to sort of reduce that effect and allow procedurally generated levels to look far more realistic and far less recognizable. Now, the last time that I looked at some crazy Unreal Engine 5 stuff, I was exploring the asset packs available on the Unreal Marketplace. In many cases, less than a hundred dollar investment in some assets will give you incredibly high quality photogrammetry scan forests and desert style biomes that can be put into any Unreal Engine project. And these assets that you can buy on the store can be set up for the exact same type of procedural content generation, and I would expect a lot of these pre-packaged assets to include procedural content generation files that are already set up for you. Basically, all of the existing assets that have been built over the years for the Unreal Engine can easily be plugged into these types of systems. And of course, all of the assets that Epic built for this demo are clear to use in any sort of commercial project. So if you want to build, say, a jungle-based game, well, most of the assets are right here and ready to go. I would imagine that there's already some devs out there using this as the building blocks for a game right now. And despite showing this tech off in the editor, which is probably the least efficient way to actually experience it, it ran pretty well nonetheless, with frame rates well above 30 FPS on Unreal's epic settings. And of course, with some optimizations and tuning the lighting and other aspects of the content, I'm sure we could get that frame rate to a much more playable state. Naturally, some corners will have to be cut for game implementation, and scale things down to ensure a good experience on all platforms, but the starting point that devs have to begin their projects with just keeps getting better and better. I've become a bit of an Unreal Engine fanboy as of late, but Epic really is knocking it out of the park with their tech, pushing things further and faster than any other competing engine, and I've got to give them props for it. We're fast approaching an equilibrium in which indie devs won't be held back by production quality in the way that they have compared to AAA studios. I think we're going to start seeing a lot more games come out over the next few years that look simply stunning and are built by small groups of devs. Are you guys as excited by this tech as I am? Let me know in the comments what you think about these more tech oriented videos and if you'd like to see more of them. And next up, check out my video showing off the crazy realistic assets that people make with photogrammetry. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap signing off.